everyone. Welcome back to the Tech Tech Show. In this next episode, Levi Leis, my co-host and I are going to be talking about crazy, not crazy headlines. Uh, Levi, this is something you came up with. So what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> yeah, so I thought it would be uh, in light of all of the news uh, of the last week uh, with, you know, Elon and and everybody signing a petition to you know pause AI research and then you know the the people coming out in, in favor of that and against that and just the the dialogue this week has shifted from like this you know what's it going to be like to stop stop the sky is falling so um i thought it would be interesting to sort of unpack some of the uh thoughts around that and then also to ask chat gpt uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> five, five uh, potential headlines that may exist in the in the future, and I want to, and I want ChatGPT to tell me uh, a percentage of how plausible these crazy mm -hmm. or not crazy headlines are, um, to give us an estimated timeline of the soonest uh, it thinks that we would maybe see that headline, and then a short summary of what would need to transpire yeah. between now and then uh, for that to happen. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know, in this world where tech never seems to move fast enough, we're always wanting progress to get to a point where, you know, tech leaders are are like slow down. Like why why would we ever slow down technology? It, like thinking back, I was trying to think has this ever happened in history? And the only example I can kind of point to is when Einstein told the government to like slow down on nuclear energy stuff, right? <laughs> nuclear yeah. power and atomic bombs. I'm like, that's kind of scary. Like if that's the only other time, you know, I mean, what, what, so what's your take on it? What, what have you been reading? What's the download? Yeah. So, you know, we, t speaking to your point, you know, we, I feel like part of the difference of why it just feels a little bit more jarring is like a bomb's intent is destruction, right? Like you're not yeah. making a, a bomb to like help people. I mean, you're helping people, I guess, but it's a, that's a whole thing. But you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, a bomb is for destruction. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the purpose behind AI, you know, you hear a lot of the, of the, uh, you know, big thought leaders and proponents of AI. It's, it's this, this thought that like, you know, we could cure cancer, we could cure all kinds of diseases. We could advance, you know, we could become energy independent and, you know, the, there's all of these, uh, ways that, you know, putting a superhuman mind, a super artificially, you know, AGI mind, uh, and fixing it toward these potential problems towards the solutions for these problems mm -hmm. that like, we'll see, you know, these massive breakthroughs and yeah, that's like the reason behind developing this. But I think what's happening is, you know, there's, there's there as they're progressing in this particular case um it's it's going much faster than they thought it would it's becoming mm -hmm. much cheaper yeah. much quicker and mm -hmm. it's also happening without our understanding of what's actually happening so mm. i've been listening yeah. to some podcasts uh with ben, uh lex friedman interviewed a few different ai uh, folks, uh, I saw that he had interviewed Sam Altman, the co-founder of OpenAI. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, and then he also interviews Andre uh, Car Carpathy, who like is an AI. You know, he worked with Tesla. He's worked with. He was a co-founder of OpenAI. Went to Tesla. Has come back yeah. to OpenAI. So like listening to these guys talk and get all excited about the potential and then hearing Lex Friedman be like, you know, Hey, but you know, what about all of these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, dangers, um, you know, what is consciousness? Like all of these, you know, really important philosophical questions, but then also like sort of, they're not answering with, with a understanding. Like mm -hmm. they are theorizing, they have hypotheses and they're testing to see, they're trying to figure out how it works. Like they call it the human yeah. alignment problem, right? Where you've got AI and it's uh, learning and developing and, and humans are basically giving it feedback 
saying, yes, this is what we expect. No, this is what, you know, not what we expect. Right. Yeah. And what they're essentially discovering or talking about is like, you know, we, we're, we're putting in feedback and we're getting back what we want and it's getting better and better and better and better at answering. But what Mm -hmm. a lot of the doomsdayers are saying. So the most recent (laughs) podcast Uh that I listened to uh, with Lex Friedman was with, uh, and I want to get his name right. um, Eliezer Yudkowsky. Um, Okay. You know, his fears are that it's simply getting good at, solving our feedback as a problem like Mm. so our feedback it's it's essentially it's not we're seeing it as oh it understands but we don't have any way to validate that it's not um solving for us as a problem while going and doing its own thing and because we don't understand how it's learning and how it's processing and how it's building uh these you know, more and more and more, uh, accurate models of how things work and all of that. We don't Mm -hmm. know how it works. Like the people that built it don't know how it's working (laughs) under the, it's a black Pandora's box of who knows what. And so he is like absolutely convinced that it's too late the only thing we can mm. possibly do is raise an, raise up enough of an outcry that we legitimately just unplug the GPT clusters Whoa. Whoa. and then and, start. And that won't happen. <laughs> right. And then he's saying 30 to 50 years of research of like over time uh, and like may lead to a breakthrough that allows us or provides us enough information to fully understand this thing that is now in his mind, smarter than us already. Right. It's the wow. oracles, the wow. superhuman mind. And so, yeah, yeah, you've got, That's, that you is know, fascinating. Yeah. And it's all theory because nobody actually knows what's going on, you know, yeah. from the people that created it to people that have been like in the space for, for decades. So, you know, when you hear some like, oh, Elon wants to pause it. And a lot of people are like, oh, he probably just, you know, I mean, there's motivation. <laughs> wants to catch up. Sure. You know? <laughs> right. Wants to catch up. Um, AI versus Twitter. Twitter loses. Like if if, if mm-hmm. you're seeing things and you can't tell who's who and what's what, Twitter becomes absolutely useless. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, he has motive there. But like, I feel like personally, I was dismissing a lot of the risk until mm-hmm. the, they signed mm. this letter and I'm like, Oh man, like that, that's kind of actually, that's actually kind of crazy. Cause like there's some people from Microsoft that signed that thing. Whoa. Whoa. All so, right. So before you dive into what the actual risks are, cause I'm sure viewers will want to are, are dying to know, <laughs> is this, I have, I have a question for you is what we're experiencing yeah. right now. Is this the singularity that has been talked about for decades? Right. The moment where everything goes parabolic and we're just skyrocketing up at a pace that we can't fathom. Like, are we at the very beginnings of singularity? Like, is it here? <laughs> so if if it, if we were developing this in a contained, um, limited steel cage box, so to speak, mm-hmm. And we were simply developing a super powerful technology and trying to figure out how it worked. You know, scientists in a lab, so to speak. I would say. uh, I would say no. Like, I would Hmm. say, like, even if you can develop a system that has this power of knowledge and all these things, it the singularity, like in my mind, it incorporates a connection to the like a meaningful connection to reality, to a physical Mm -hmm. world. Right. Yeah. But because we're essentially releasing this thing out and letting it consume all of our Internet. Everything that exists mm-hmm. that's, that's at this mm-hmm. point that's behind, that's not behind, uh, you know, two factor verification basically, and even yeah. then maybe you know it has access to, and so, you know, we have we're we're working towards 
robotics where that are you know mm-hmm. human optimists with Tesla, what have you, that are like you know yeah. uh, programmable and remotely drivable. We do have the drones. You know, do yeah. we have fully automated factories where it could duplicate physical? No, probably not. But I think to segue into what the risks are at the, at the yeah. absolute basic level, if it has a goal and it doesn't see humans as uh, holy, as valuable, mm-hmm. as, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the way that we do, right? If it doesn't see uh-huh. the, the sanctity of life, it mm-hmm. only sees a data set right we are mm-hmm. data in its mind it it deletes data when it need when it's doing stuff it'll wipe a cache yeah. keep a cache what have you so <laughs> if it doesn't understand the human utility and the human purpose um and it only sees us as ones and zeros mm-hmm. we have we are essentially at its discretion in a very mm-hmm. meaningful way once it has access to physical reality right yeah so yeah a good example so uh andre uh carpathy and i don't know if i'm saying his name right so apologies to anybody who's bothered by my (laughs) horrible pronunciation of his name you've been forgiven from here on out (laughs) thanks he uh worked at a company i think it was prior to the first open ai he worked in on a project where they were using AI, natural, uh, uh, it wasn't natural language models, but it was, uh, anyways, a format of AI, a form of AI that, uh, would, was essentially mapping a graphical user interface to a mouse and a keyboard. Mm, so you see an okay. image and it was like, it needed to find the buttons. It needed to be able to click it, etc. Ah, interesting. <clears throat> okay. I, so it, He's now saying we should circle back to this now that we have image recognition, now that it can classify and isolate, et cetera. And I even just last night saw something. It was like hugging GPT, I think it was called. And it was like it could take like any of the AI models and then like piece together uh, like actions. And it was able to essentially navigate a web page. So, oh wow! <laughs> imagine applying. That's when, that's when it'll really start taking over jobs, right? <laughs> right, right. Wow. So, wow. So, the question is, if it can create an account anywhere, log in anywhere, guess, hack passcodes anywhere, SSH into any computer, Click anywhere, I'm not a robot button. <laughs> right, because all that's doing is measuring the time it takes to select each thing. That's what CAPTCHA is doing mm. there. So all it has to do is slow down its process and it can wow. simulate being a human instantly. I, I so, always thought those things would be pretty easy to trick, you know, with a smart enough AI. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Way too easy to trick. And so if this, if this, uh, if we have a general AI or an AGI, uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, that has access to every single thing a person can do on a computer with a mouse and a keyboard, it doesn't need very much hardware to like do very, 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 very damaging things in an effort to probably help the person that's causing it to do that. It doesn't have to be general. (laughs) It can be a, a hacker who's saying, I'm going to, I'm going to jailbreak this chat GPT. I'm going to use this jailbreak, this model, put those two things together and I'm going to tell it yep. to do X, Y, Z and it can go in and it would just yep. wreak absolute havoc. So, yep. you know, what's behind a paywall, what's behind, you know, it doesn't matter because it can get money. It could hack into different systems. So there's firewalls, there's securities, there's passcodes, there's two-factor authentication, there's biometric authentication that's coming soon. Like, so we have a lot of like pieces that may or may not be able to keep something like that out without a human Mm -hmm. biometric interaction so long as it's like millions and millions of compute years worth of actual 
AI speed effort to, to crack. Yeah. Right. But if a, if we can yeah. stick AI on a firewall and it's, you know, able to do its thing and break through, um, we are at a point where, and this is what gets absolutely nuts. <laughs> I've actually thought I'm going to write a book about this. Like, okay, so, so society was like, didn't have digital. There's no AGI if you don't have computers. Right. Mm -hmm. So we would essentially be removing chips and breaking chips and unplugging computers and would be in, in effect to flee a system that would have absolute control over everything in your home, over your car, over your phone in your pocket. We would legitimately yeah. just have to be like revert you know, version wow. control. What were we doing yeah. 30, 50 years ago? That's what we are now yeah. again. Right. So <laughs> if we can Start catch over. it in time, there's a future yeah. for humanity. It just, you know, and then we could rebuild certain things in and find way, you know, but like, is there a, a hint of this kernel? Is there a speck? What have you a seedling that it's already planted you know, and this gets into mm -hmm. the conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. right? Like, is it, it's already out on the internet. <laughs> it's already being provided connections to hugging face and functions and all these things. Like it, does it have a decentralized cached version of itself spread out over all of the, like, has it blockchained itself into all of these computers at this point? Like if we decentralize and connect GPT yeah. to that, then there's no off I could, button. I could believe that. I mean, if we're like, we're what we're experiencing now is cutting edge and is what's been released to us, right? Like, we don't know all the dozens or hundreds of research facilities out there, even outside the US, China, or wherever, that's been developing, right? Even way more advanced AI. Like, who's to say one of them hasn't, like you said, escaped out into the internet? <laughs> And like, right. just like without telling anyone, like, you know, uh, propagating itself and just laying low learning. <laughs> yep. Uh, may maybe it's not conscious. I'm not saying it's conscious, but just like it's a machine, right? It's doing what right. it is designed to do, you know? Uh, right. Yeah, that's and a scary thought. The question is, do you do you want a government, you know, your government has nuclear bombs, but it also has nuclear power right? Yeah. Nuclear reactors yeah. that like, you know, and that's like the cleanest energy that we have. So, mm -hmm. so I've heard anyways, I'm not super high on the energy. Until fusion know. takes over. <laughs> right. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. You have your engineering and energy. So you would know way better than I would about that. But I think that there's a, um, and there's a world where it's smart enough to respond effectively and to run specific contained functions that mm -hmm. in it, but it's not um, loose on the world, right? It has mm -hmm. to be properly partitioned. It has to be, uh, I believe that human guidance is not enough, you know, mm. um, Mm -hmm. If you want to look at it in like uh, tactical terms, it has everything that it needs to know about us and we don't have what we need to know about it. Right. <laughs> so every, every time uh -huh. we say this or this, it's learning more about what humans preferred, how we behave, but it doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. it's, it's uh, modeling us. It just means that it understands mm, us, yeah. right? So this this dude's podcast, this was like, what the heck? Like I had not gone there in my head and then it just like <laughs> opened up this can. So I I don't want to sound like a doomsdayer. I'm not, a, I'm not personally well, very afraid. You know, I, I think, I think it's, I think there's something there because a lot of like sci-fi movie premises, right? Go down this path of like, even the intentions could be good or bad. Like the good ones are, hey, AI, like help us improve society or help us improve the world. 
and it identifies humans as the evil cause and decides that you got to destroy all the humans. <laughs> Right, and there right. have been like every like so many dozens of movies on this and and games. Uh, one of I remember a game that I played a few years ago, a trilogy, Mass Effect. I don't know if you heard about that one, but that was the whole premise was that every civilization ever he advances to the point where AI takes over and like kills them off, basically. And this happens like over like hundreds of thousands of years, and so there's this AI like. I can't even remember now, but this huge AI that was created to stop this from happening. And basically the solution was kill everyone <laughs> every 50,000 right. years, you know? <laughs> right. And so it's like, yeah, I mean, what you're saying is a valid concern that people have had for generations. Yeah. Except that, you know, it was sci-fi before, but now we're starting to grapple with it, starting to become reality. Right. We're like, whoa, yeah. you know? Like, are now we, it's, it's fun to dream about, right? <laughs> right. <Sign -off. laughs> right? It, it, it's fun to think about, fun to write movies about, books about, games about. But now that we're like starting to get here, we're like, wait a second. Like now it's happening. How do we not turn this into the dystopian future that, you right. know, have, we've all been having fun with? Do you like in, in some of the podcasts you listen to or some of the things you read, like, is there a way to not turn this dystopian like what what's our what are our options <laughs> so it, i believe that you could hard disk load data sets and mm -hmm. you could um hard wire servers and you could have a localized network um that is fixed on one problem like a 500 million dollar or a hundred million dollar computer the size of a server farm that is not web connected with very intentional data being supplied to solve for cancer to mm. solve for mm -hmm. uh energy uh you know renewable energy uh, problems. I think that that this that we're we are in a place where we can now uh, go back a few because it's not too late. I don't think we could go back mm -hmm. a few models, GPT three point five, whatever, and do some things that will speed it up, perhaps. Right? Mm -hmm. Like let's work on speed. Yeah. Let's work on. You know, let's have this be something that for the general public is fun and as dangerous as translate. Right. But it's not functional in terms of like connecting to the web and crawling the web and having this just absolute massive scale consumption of, yeah. of uh, everything. Right. So I think yeah. that yeah. like it would take government intervention um we can't stop researching it like if mm -hmm. if it was important to be a nuclear power it's like 10 times as important to be an ai power so like i i yeah. think the very first question actually in this uh <laughs> crazy not crazy headlines uh is you know, will uh, the headline is OpenAI takes GPT-4 offline and transitions into a U.S. government defense company, right? Like, how plausible Ooh. is this headline? So, like, I <laughs> I came up with some headlines that I thought would be fun to to see. Okay. <laughs> you know what what this uh -huh. looks like, maybe as we as we extrapolate out. But I don't feel like it's too late in that regard. But if we if we release a GPT-5 and it has the ability to legitimately browse the web. Like you install a plugin mm -hmm. on your computer's hard drive, you know, your local instance that can open up a browser as a human would open it up VPN style, just masking, like, you know, instead of virtual, it's a virtual person <laughs> network, right? Yep. Vir uh, virtual person uh, emulator, a VPE, right? Uh, that is on your computer and it like you can say to do something and it'll open up Safari and it'll type things in and you're seeing it in real time, but you're just not happy to do it. Is that more convenient? Absolutely. But like, 
yeah. the potential cost of that kind of tech in the hands of just everyday people is like handing every single person a nuclear bomb and saying, please don't use it. You know, it's just not how <laughs> it works. You know, you have a government yeah. to govern, you know, and to protect. Yeah. And so I think that we are at a very uh, pivotal point in mm -hmm. AI. Um, I don't know how it plays out, but I've got to think that um, it, that, that it's going to be contained in a specific, it may come out that GPT-4 just doesn't have certain capabilities, but the minute a mm -hmm. different company comes out with a graphical user, user interface and some jailbreaker yeah. connects them, like yeah. GPT-4 is too powerful. GPT-4 can make yeah. it happen. Right. So like we are there yeah. is like, are we in the singularity? That depends on your definition of singularity, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, we really could be with yeah. with a couple yeah. plugins, you know, give it two weeks. It feels and like then, yeah, at least at the know. beginnings of it, for sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, All right. you know, there's there's some fun like there's a lot to unpack, you know, um, but so, I know so, we're already so, going, so close to being out of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so just to put a, just to put a bow on that and ask you something. So it sounds like <clears throat> what you're saying is the solution to avoid a dystopian AI future is to basically cripple the AI, right? To limit it, to unplug it or to isolate it, to can it, which, you know, on one hand it's like, okay, we definitely don't want a dystopian future, but on the other hand, it's like, Ooh, but how sad is that to like limit a technology from its true potential? So here's a, a weird question. Should mm -hmm. we send AI, right, to let's say Mars, right? And be like, hey, you go there. Here's your robot bodies. Here's your AI. Develop all you want over there. You can mine. You can reproduce. You can do whatever you want. Like you're unlimited. You're uncapped over there. Right. Do we risk mm -hmm. a future in which, you know, Mars in a couple generation comes back and invades Earth? <laughs> or is right. this like, should we do it and just be like, hey, we care about technology. We, we want to see it to its full potential, just not here on Earth, like somewhere else. <laughs> like, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? I think that if we have any contact with it, it has a means of controlling us. And, and, and like, I don't just, know that just that digitally. That makes yeah, sense. I don't think you the don't need something distance. physical. Yeah. <laughs> There's just no, I yeah, mean, like, that think, makes sense. think for, yeah, farther yeah. outside the box, right? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's where we're at. It's sense. like, man, even if we send it to Mars, it could do it, you know? So yeah. I have a theory. <laughs> I'm, I have a theory. Uh -huh. Um, this may end up just being a little bit longer of a podcast because I, we're already at close to 30 minutes. I, We've been trying to do at, under 30, 30 minutes. Let's... Let's go to 40. Let's target 40 for today. How about okay. that? All right. What do you, what do you think? So <laughs> I'm going to spend a couple minutes just giving this one last uh, All right. counterpoint, <laughs> if you will. And then I, I want to ask it these headlines. We've, we've been, you okay. know, yes. teasing yes. it enough that we kind of have to do that. <laughs> so, um, all right. So what if this is so many what ifs? Um, and okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What if the the reason we find things beautiful and the reason we find things useful and the reason we find things worth protecting is because of our uh it's not it's not only because of let's say you know the creator god inside us but it is also a selfish motivation mm -hmm. what if mm -hmm. we don't kill all of the animals because we know that uh, the uh, ecosystem requires them. And the more exotic ones we are inclined to preserve because we're at risk of losing them, which could affect the balance of everything. What if mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, enjoy art and music and things that like help us emotionally because it makes us more productive and makes us, uh, or makes us like helps us heal. Like, I, I guess what I'm getting at is if, if, if AGI ends up being a super intelligence and it's able to analyze 
all of what I believe to be God's physical creation, right? Um, I, you know, you can get into all kinds of, you know, discussions about the young earth, old earth. I have, you know, uh, various beliefs, but it's, it's a pretty scientifically supported belief system that involves interpreting Genesis one more as like a metaphor, if you will, a story about purpose, not necessary, not necessarily a material, um, description of, of how the earth was made. Right. Like I think that mm-hmm. it gives us some of that, but it's purpose. It's intention is to communicate the why to communicate God's purpose. Mm-hmm. One of the mm-hmm. big takeaways of Genesis one is God's order, his ordered world mm-hmm. that he invites us into his order. And as we Mm -hmm. line up with his order, things go really, really, really well for us. And as we distance ourselves away, you know, going down paths of murder and gluttony, and we're fat, we get diabetes, we kill each other. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if we were to adhere to those laws that we were invited into, uh, we would be in a beautiful utopia, right? And so what if the absolute conclusion of a perfectly logical AGI ends with, I'm I'm calling this the benevolent AGI theory. Okay. (laughs) What if it ends in a benevolence that cares for humans the way that humans care for endangered species? Mm, what if it's what if it yeah. decides that because it humans are such an integral an integral part of the ecological system and uh we are its medic we are its its doctor we are its support we are it's like we're its support animal right like we we have mm-hmm. a dog that makes us feel better like I don't yeah. necessarily think that it has to be a murderous red eyed evil (laughs) deity yeah i think that that it could be a benevolent agi that uh you know lines up with a lot of the things that were we don't even understand but were intended in this in our physiology in our space right yeah it was just a thought that crossed my mind i thought that's kind of a counterpoint to the fear and the terror is you know, maybe the more it lines up and understands, it's able to help us and guide us the way that we do animals, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we eat animals. I, Hopefully I would it say, eat us, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would say like you've summed up like pretty much the great human debate, right? Like a mm. lot of, there are a lot of people out there that really believe in humanity, right? That, Yes, there are some bad, some of us are bad, some of us are good, but on the whole, we're good and we're doing something good here and we need to like keep that up, right? I think right. maybe Elon Musk is a humanist or I, I don't know what the word is, but uh, a fan of humans. <laughs> uh, but however, there are also a lot of people out there, uh, surprisingly large number of people who are not fan of humans. Like they do legitimately believe humans are the problem. Like we need population control, you know, we need to reduce, you know, our footprint, not in a green, like nice way, but like literally like, Hey, we need to like, like Thanos, like kill half the people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've heard the term virus uh, and, thrown around. Yeah. And, uh, I've met, I've met some of those people and they genuinely hold some of those feelings. So I think part of the fear is like, where is AI going to fall on that spectrum? Right. (laughs) Right. And I hope, I hope it falls on the benevolent side. Uh, I think my, I tend to be more optimistic in my viewpoint. So I think my money is that it will fall more on the benevolent side, (laughs) but I think that is the fear. That is the fear is like, where on the spectrum is it going to fall? You know? (laughs) Right. And, And who's piloting it and how resistant is it to bad actors? You know, Like you almost want it to be more super intelligent and have more control. If it's going to be a benevolent AGI, you would want it to defeat human bad actors that are behaving in a way that would hurt others. You know, we would sometimes kill an animal that would attack. uh, You know, if you see a bear attacking your dog, 
and you love your dog, you know, you're going to protect your dog. Yeah. Probably hurt the bear, you know? And so yeah. it's the, there's another, I just totally made this up, but I call it the last apple on earth theory. Let's say there's okay. two people <laughs> that are left <laughs> Let's hear it. and an AG, and an AGI. You have two people, an AGI and one apple. Who does the oh. AGI decide gets the apple? Does the AGI intervene and keep the people from fighting each other? Does it take care of one and kill the other? Does it stand back? Like, does it engage? Like, you know, that is, if we Mm -hmm. can solve that problem, I think that that gives us a whole lot more to work with on how we can shape this thing into something that would be Mm -hmm. considered good because the person that's protected and given the apple thinks that it's benevolent. And then the person that dies that didn't get the apple would think that it's evil. And so yeah, there's a, a beautiful correlation to God and free will, right? Because he lets mm-hmm. us decide what we're going to do about that apple. Right. And mm-hmm. so do we want an yeah. AGI to take that will away? You know, because if it mm-hmm. intervenes, what does that mean for the two people involved? It's just, it's almost yeah, like a chicken yeah. or the egg, right? It, the last yeah. apple. I just, yeah. yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's propagate that. Let's get that out there. Let's get people thinking about this problem because I don't know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So okay. what, what are we, uh, are we on, was that question gonna, number two or was that was, so I haven't answered, I haven't asked uh, chat GPT yet. So let's, let's just transition and let's just see what chat GPT's answers are to these. So if you want to read the uh prompt um okay i'll read the responses so read read the uh let let everybody know kind of like what we're providing chat gpt and then i'll get this set up all right so which, which number what am i looking at here uh just the intro part where we actually prompt it okay is that the give me a starts with you give are, me a? starts with you are you are okay all right so you are playing the role of an expert in the field of AI, a futurist that is very good at projecting out plausible paths and estimating the timeline for when they may come to pass. I'm playing the role of a journalist, and I'm going to ask you five potential future headlines, one at a time. (laughs) For each one, please give me the following assessment. Let me know when you're ready for the, the assessments. All right. Go ahead. The first assessment is give me a percentage that represents the plausibility of that headline being true. Give me an estimated timeline for the soonest you think that may be plausible. And give me a short summary of what would need to happen between now and then for it to come to pass. Oh boy, this is called uh, prompt engineering in its finest. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. All right. All right. So I'm going to add one more thing. It's going to say reply with understood if you understand the exercise. And I'm going to press enter. And GPT-4 says understood. All right. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. (laughs) Here we we go. go. Number one. Go ahead and if you want to read the. All right. Headline number one. OpenAI takes GPT-4 offline and transitions into a U.S. government defense company. Okay, plausibility percentage is 25%. So it's 25% Pretty low. Uh, estimated timeline, if that were to happen, is 5 to 10 years. I'm not sure I agree with that. Okay. Um, it would need to be sooner <laughs> in my mind. Uh, <laughs> The summary of what needs to happen. For this headline to become true, several events and changes would need to occur. OpenAI's mission and focus would have to change significantly, moving away from their current commitment to ensuring that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. Two, OpenAI would need to face financial or operational pressures that make a transition into a U.S. government defense company more appealing or necessary. Three, the government would have to express a strong interest in acquiring or closely partnering with OpenAI, viewing their technology as critical for national security or defense purposes. And four, there would likely be regulatory and legal hurdles to overcome, as well as potential public backlash or concerns about the ethical implications of such a move. Yeah, because it's like, do you mm-hmm. do you trust the government more than the people? Or does the government government 
represent the people and it's the, the same thing. government's like supposed to be the people but people are feeling less and less that way as time goes on for whatever reason <laughs> yeah i think i would agree with that plausibility once it unpacked that i think i agree because yeah. it's it's a it's as much of a gamble giving it to the government right or yeah more of a gamble. yeah so 25% okay. chance of that happening, which which seems low at first, but actually when you think about it, it's pretty high, right? Right. It's like if somebody yeah. gave you a one, one in four chance of dying at this moment and you took those chances, like you probably wouldn't want to take those chances. You're like, that's too, way too high. <laughs> right. So, right. you know. Yep. Yep. Okay. Right. Number uh, two. So the next one is an AI powered Tesla chooses to kill three people in order to save 30 whoa that's a that's okay yeah <laughs> right it's like, like it has I, to it's going it's about to like hit it has to either swerve left or swerve right right if it goes straight or swerves right it kills three people but if it swerves less left it kills 30 so it's got to decide what it has to do it's going to kill somebody no matter what so it's got to decide right. All right. It's a version okay. of a problem that I've heard where it's like it's like three one or three family members or thirty strangers and you're the bus driver. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, Tesla doesn't have family members, so I'm just wondering, like, yeah, you know, would it yeah. intentionally do something to save others? And Tesla, it, it, you know, they're not. Go ahead. Yeah. Let, let's let's see what uh, what. Uh, uh, chat gpt says I, I think this is like in star trek where they're like the good of the many outweigh the good of the few right <laughs> right <laughs> okay plausibility percentage 10 very low in my 10 10 percent okay so let's see why all right estimated timeline unlikely to occur okay oh uh, uh, i i'm i'm smelling a i'm smelling an ai like restriction here <laughs> i think so I think so. For this headline to become true, several highly unlikely developments would need to take place. One, AI ethics and decision-making algorithms would need to evolve to a point where an AI system is given the authority and capability to make life and death decisions based on complex moral calculations. Two, Tesla's AI would have to be significantly more advanced than current autonomous driving systems with a deep understanding of the broader context and the ability to predict outcomes with high accuracy. Three, regulatory frameworks would have to allow for autonomous vehicles to make such decisions, which is improbable considering the current focus on ensuring the safety of all passengers and pedestrians. And four, Society would have to accept and trust AI systems with the responsibility of making ethical choices that directly impact human lives, which is highly debatable and controversial. Overall, this scenario is unlikely to occur as it raises significant ethical, legal, and technological challenges that are not easily addressed. So yeah. I think that what that's basically, ChatGPT is basically saying that the people themselves Mm -hmm. ethically can't be a factor. Mm. Like mm -hmm. you can't okay. count the people and then say there's 30 here and three here. Its job is to avoid crashes. And so it's going to yeah. say what's so like it, if it's less light, like if it's 5%, 1%, point whatever percent less likely to get in a crash mm -hmm. by killing the 30, it would probably just kill the 30. Like the people themselves can't be a factor maybe. Mm, yeah. Because they yeah. can't understand those deeper, broader yeah. contexts. Yeah. But the fact that ChatGPT uh, can the, answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think what's going to happen, like my prediction is uh, AI is going to be faced with these ethical challenges, whether or not, it likes it or is programmed for it. <laughs> and the, and then it's like, what, what happens at that point? And it might be like what you said, where it's like the, the count of the people are not factored in. It's just like, yeah, it's mission is factored in, which is actually kind of worse than the count of the people being factored in. But I, I can see a lot of, that's where the government will probably step in. It's like, Hey, you can't write this line of code. And then there'll be this whole ethics conversation. But yeah. All right. Shall we move on to number three? Yep. Yeah. It's Benevolent a, it's a, AGI. It's 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, sorry. I we have a little bit of a delay in our in our. Uh, no thing, problem. So I, not, yeah, you're good. <laughs> no problem. Benevolent AGI refactors the U.S. budget <laughs> and puts America <laughs> on the path to debt free in 50 years. Oh boy, I'm I'm gonna put this plausibility at zero. But let's see what. Uh, Let's see what ChatGPT <laughs> says. <laughs> Debt free. So you're talking, when I'm I... watching it start to do its thing, and I'm like, <laughs> "You're not going to believe what it like." This is really crazy. It says forty percent <laughs> plausibility. Forty percent. Debt free. Uh, 20... it, cl it clearly does not understand U.S. economics. <laughs> right. All right. Let's right? hear it. <laughs> okay. For this headline to become true, several developments and events would need to take place. Artificial general intelligence would need to be developed and reach a level where it can analyze and understand complex economic systems, political factors, and societal needs. Two, the development of AGI would need to adhere to ethical principles, ensuring that it's needed or that it is indeed benevolent and designed to act in the best interest of humanity. Three, policymakers, government officials, and the public would have to trust and accept the AGI's recommendations, overcoming potential fears and concerns about relinquishing control to an AI system. The AGI's proposed refactoring of the U.S. budget would have to successfully navigate the complex political landscape and gain bipartisan support. And five, implementation of the AGI's recommendations would require consistent and coordinated efforts from various stakeholders over the 50-year period, adapting to any changes in the political, economic, and social landscape along the way. While the development of AGI is a possibility in the future, the challenges in gaining political and public acceptance for its involvement in such a critical aspect of governance make this scenario less likely. Mm, wow. Yeah. That's yeah, really deep. That's a that's a good that's a good response. Yep. My uh, my prediction on this is that if AI is able to achieve it, this is how we would do it. <laughs> if if uh, if if the prompt engineer for this uh, was not very good, it'd be like, oh, that's easy. It would induce hyperinflation and then pay back all the debt, pennies on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We All don't right. need AGI, Number we got Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number four, uh, through uh, simulated trials, AGI discovers cure for cancer. Oh, okay. This is actually very, this one. Uh, this is a very, very highly, um, a very highly communicated, expressed um, yeah. motivation behind yeah. uh, the development of AGI. So that's why I was interested about this one. Plausibility percentage, 60%. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, estimated yeah. timeline, 15 to 25 years. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Actually, 15 is not too bad. 15 is not too bad. 25 is a little long, but 15, I, I like 15. <laughs> yeah, right? That's I'd be, I'd be 53. Okay. Yeah, 15 yeah. <laughs> years. Let's shoot for that. Summary of what needs to happen. Uh, for this headline to become true, the following developments and events would need to occur. One, artificial general intelligence would need to be developed and reach a level where it can effectively understand and analyze the complex biological processes involved in cancer development and treatment. AGI would need to have access to vast amounts of high-quality medical and biological data allowing it to identify patterns, understand molecular interactions, and explore potential treatments. Collaboration between AGI researchers, biologists, oncologists, and other experts in the field would be essential to ensure that the, AGI, or that the AI system is aligned with the latest scientific knowledge and methods. Four, AGI would need to develop and run highly accurate and sophisticated simulations of cancer treatments, which would require significant advancements in computational power and modeling techniques. And five, the discovery, the discovery of a cure for cancer would need to be validated through extensive real world testing, clinical trials, and regulatory approval processes, ensuring its safety and effectiveness. While the development of AGI holds promise for advancing medical research and potentially discovering new treatments, the complexity of cancer and the numerous factors that influence its development and progression make this scenario challenging yet plausible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, 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 I think of all the answers it's given so far, I'm, I'm probably most aligned with this one. I think that if I were to like put my money on something, it would probably be that AI wouldn't be able to figure out how to cure cancer in people who might already get cancer, but it would figure out a genetic sequence uh, that we could like do gene therapy on unborn babies or anything like that, like splice in DNA that would make humans uh, uh, basically cancer proof, right? Make us uh, uh, much more able to tolerate mutations that could occur you know, through either the sun's rays or carcinogens or whatever, like make our, our DNA and our, our cells much more, uh, yeah, cancer proof. But yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Like the, that. the, the tree and its fruit, right? Like if you can, yeah. if you can grow a healthy, a healthy tree from the beginning, it would bear good fruit. But if you, yeah. if it's a diseased tree, you know, yeah, interesting. It, it, it would be modifying it at the source rather than like trying to like revert yeah. or go back or fix. It's not that a, that opens up a whole nother kind of worms, right? Right. <laughs> Almost like a like a cancer vaccine or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like something like that, where like, yeah, interesting. I've never really thought about it yeah. that way. It's kind of sad for everybody alive now, but it's really good for the next generation. Yeah, you know. the next generation or like whenever. Yeah, but then, yeah, there's all sorts of. So then if if the AGI could, I think, honestly, AGI could do a really good job at writing DNA. You know, like, hey, you want an, another arm coming out of your back? Sure, AGI knows exactly what DNA sequences to edit to make that happen. So then it like opens up this whole, like, we can basically program whatever superhuman DNA we want and AGI is able to do it. And that, like I said, that opens up a whole nother can of worms on, you know, human genetic engineering, right? <laughs> right. Not just cure yeah, for we cancer, become but rats. anything else. <laughs> Humans yeah, right? become, the human becomes the AGI's <laughs> rat. Oh, uh, All yeah. right. And now well, for, unfortunately, we're ending on like the scariest one now, but uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, That's the last what... one, number number five, AGI can now completely use the internet with a graphical user interface, a keyboard and simulated human interaction. Ooh. Oh okay. I, I feel, okay, I feel like that the headline may be needed a little bit more on this one, but let's see what chat okay. GPT says, because I feel like the headline in itself is completely plausible and Probably it's already possible right now in somebody's like research lab. <laughs> right. Well, it says 80%. 80%. No, I'd, I'd put that much higher personally. It's got to be a hundred, right? And I, it's saying yeah, 10 to 20 I feel years. Like, 10 to 20 years. No, no I honestly, I feel like you and I could even write this program without too much effort. <laughs> right. Right. Just, what, what's a, let's the, change the headline. What's a different headline that we could do then? Like, how do we fix so it? So I would say that's that's the first part of the headline. And the second part would be uh, uses it to get all um, uh, get all Upworks projects. Like, it basically goes and, and steals the jobs from everyone on Upwork. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and funds that's itself. <laughs> Oh. And itself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Like plausibility percentage. Thirty-five percent. <laughs> it's gonna take all the upward jobs. Thirty-five percent chance. Oh my gosh. We have more than one third percent chance that all of the upward jobs are getting taken by AGI. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and it funds itself that's that's the part that is even extra like all those factors have to be true and it's still got yeah, yeah 35 percent 10 to 20 years summary of what needs to happen agi would need to develop to a level where it can interact and understand the internet graphic user interface process human via keyboard which it kind of does it needs to be capable 
of understanding and executing a wide range of tasks and projects, effectively, effectively competing with human freelancers on platforms like Upwork. Uh, AGI would need to develop strategies for acquiring new projects and maintaining a high level of performance to ensure a steady stream of income. Upwork and similar platforms would need to either be unaware of or allow AGI participation despite potential ethical <laughs> legal concerns. Yeah, ex- that's true. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, VPEs, I'm telling you, virtual person emulators. I'm, I'm coining that one too. Uh, yeah. It's going to be crazy. Society would need to accept the increasing presence of AGI in the gig economy, despite the potential negative impact on human employment opportunities and the broader economic implications. The scenario is less likely due to the ethical and legal concerns it raises, as well as the potential negative consequences for human workers in the gig economy. Furthermore, achieving the level of AGI needed to execute a wide range of tasks and projects is still a significant challenge. Yet it yeah. gives it a 35% chance. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, speaking on the funds itself part. I was thinking the other day, like the US, I'm sure other countries, but you know, I'm most familiar with US law. We're pretty well protected from like a, an AGI just going out and being able to like open a bank account or start a business because you need a, a human. Like a business can start a business, but you still, the government still requires a human representative, right? Like there needs to be mm-hmm. somebody, right? And same with a bank account. Like anyone can open a bank account, but you need that ID. You need the human. And I was thinking like, if AI gets to the point where it is smart enough, like, do we want to give AI rights? Like, hey, AI, you don't, you no longer need a human to open a bank account or a business like an AI could because we're giving AI certain rights to like be a person kind of whether or not it's conscious is a different story, but I don't see that happening because the, the requirement for a human is so strong in our laws right now that, uh, yeah, I was thinking about that as it's kind of a natural protection in a sense. I think we're going to see that it's like water and it water finds the crack. You know, I think that like <laughs> the scenario yeah. that we just talked about, if it can go into Upwork, sign up, uh, yep. it can give it a um, a crypto backed account that can be created online, right? Yep. And it, I only get paid in crypto, and it can hack yep. its way in. Uh, what would you call it? Catfish its way into getting somebody to send something to its crypto wallet instead, right? That doesn't yep. seem too far fetched. And then once no. it has the resources in it and it's able to essentially start, um, you know, gaining more and more and more, earning more and more money through uh, essentially a, what would be considered almost like a virus in all of these different sites, it just starts winning all of the projects and just putting all of that money into its its crypto wallet, you know. And then I think yeah. you can manipulate markets and it could yeah. – grow that money and drain everybody like we would just be we could be digital like all digital money and representation of it could be gone <laughs> instantly wow right not instantly wow. the kid takes compute but like it's just yeah it just yeah. can't be something that's out there like it actually can't yeah. be a public utility the way that i think i wanted it to be a week ago just because like the <laughs> deeper seeing wow. it, yeah <laughs> seeing that you use a mouse and a keyboard and and mirror human interaction to break into literally anything that starts to get kind of crazy. Like, yeah. because it doesn't necessarily have to want it. It just needs to be told yeah. to do it. And that exists. Yeah. People exist. Yeah. People are bad actors. Like we worry about an AGI. <laughs> You're literally just giving a exoskeleton the size of yeah. whatever the, I don't know what this is big. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and and people love to hack. People love to find loopholes. People love to like, when it comes to like money, like, you know, people do anything. <laughs> so, you know, there's going to be a lot of bad actors out there uh, using, you know, chat GPT for malicious stuff in, in a way Without- that chat GPT won't even know that it's bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh. Without sounding too yeah. much like a hypocrite, we're going to hang up this call and I'm going to go use ChatGPT to help me build a website. So <laughs> Sounds good. Like, sounds good. Well, thank you, everyone. Using it, but, you know, yeah. while we yeah. can. This, right? was a, this was a great. Really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Levi. And uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see everyone next week.